Thank you everybody for joining us for today's AMA. We're excited to share the answers to the questions that have come in. We really appreciate everybody that took the time to read the circular and has reached out to ask us questions on our website, through our Investor Connect site, or on today's AMA. What we've done to most efficiently use our time is grouped it into the top questions that came in and we're gonna provide answers to all those questions. We encourage you to continue to check out the information on our website, to check out the information on the microsite, and to read all the publicly available information, including the circular itself, so that you can be most informed before you go to make your vote. Thank you to all the shareholders that read the circular that we put out last week regarding our deal with Sea Electric. We appreciate the time that you took to look into the information. Our team spent a lot of time compiling the information for the circular. So we'll start with a question that we've heard a couple of times around why now? And we talked about that a little bit on our live stream when we announced the deal itself, but I think the really important part of why now for both Tony on the C side and myself on the extra side is really around the inflection point of both of the companies. We had the next milestone of integrating the tech into the C drive system, letting us know that we really could get that additional performance that we had been looking and simulating and talking about for several years. We knew that the two contracts that are key to the C side with blue chip OEMs were really just at their inflection point of deliveries and moving into the first of a multi-year contract. And from the extra side, we had invested a lot into the infrastructure and that ability to scale up in 2024 and really be able to provide large volume production backed by quality processes like 8D. And so this was really the inflection point to be able to provide the ability to take the company to the next stage and allow us to really recognize value as we did that. So we got some questions around the strategy of XRO and if the merger with C is a change in that strategy. In one of our previous live streams, we shared from our Calgary headquarters on our wall where we have our five-year strategy, which was a long process that we went through with our board of directors. So on that, what you would have found is that it is actually completely aligned to what our five-year strategy was. And it goes from a ramp up year all the way to a growth year to profitability. And so we see this as completely aligned to our strategy for XRO. The next set of questions that we did receive a lot of, I'm gonna go just a little bit off of what I have committed to and say that I'm gonna answer one question that is not directly related to the deal, but I understand that it's on shareholders' minds as we think about what is the future of coil driver standalone. So we've got a lot of questions around what is the current utilization of our facility for coil driver. And what I would tell you on that is we haven't publicly announced that. And the reason why is this is a process. This is a journey that we're going through to get us through to large volume production. It was one of the synergies for the deal itself. And so we did launch our production in September as we committed to. On September 20th, we also communicated to all of our shareholders that we were doing a slow ramp up so that we could work through the problems with first production and not have a big impact against our bank account. And we have successfully done that. As our previous press releases have showed, we have released product right now into a variety of different customers. We are successfully working through those commissioning and pilots. We are successfully working through our launch of full series production. That's where you move from small volume to large volume. So I would say that we're very happy with everything that has happened. I'm gonna tie that to a second set of questions that we've asked around, why don't we share more about the problems that we incurred? And so we can do that as we put out news to our shareholders in the future. But what I would say is that we've always done that. We look at those and we try to be really proactive of what happens as we scale up. It's part of the fundamental DNA of how we've created the company. So as we've worked through that, most of the problems that we've incurred are problems that we expected in our list of risks as we scaled production. And so we continue to work through those. We're on track and feeling very good about where we are and about launching our production in September. Thinking towards the next set of questions, there was a few questions around what is our priorities for 2024? And then the second part being, what excites us as we go into 2025? So what I would start with is on 2024, 100% of our focus will be on delivering to the customers that we have contracted right now. Part of the excitement falls into 2024 and what C Electric has been able to accomplish through the hard work that they put in to win deals with Mac and Hino. And there's other customers that are in both of the order books for both XRO and C. So all of our teams are very excited about delivering that this year. There's a lot to do and everybody is committed and the work has already started. So we're feeling really good about that. As far as the excitement, I really see this as an accelerator to electrification. 
And so I'm really excited to be part of how we make sure that our future includes electrification and how resilient both our team and the C team has been through some pretty turbulent times as a capital and a private company on the C side. So I'm really excited about the inflection point that the company is at and how transformational this is for XRO. Another group of questions was around the patents. I was actually really happy to see those questions come in because one of the core principles as we thought to what company we would want to look at for an M&A was around how we ensured that we were increasing our patent position. This allows us to have an increased patent portfolio of over 60 patents with the combination of C and XRO. There's also a combination of patents that cover both the software and the hardware solutions. And as we look to the extra side, we continue to build our patent portfolio, including our charging patent that was filed over a year ago, which will allow us to have the next generation of charging specifically oriented towards commercial trucking and that benefit to AC fast charge versus DC fast charge for commercial trucks. We have our harmonics patent, and then on the C side, we have the patents on the VCU, the vehicle control unit. So we'll continue to invest in our R&D and continue to build our patent portfolio to remain true to our technology company portfolio. From a board of directors perspective, our governance and nomination committee went through a rigorous process where we looked at the skills matrix that we wanted, not just for the transaction itself, but for what's upcoming over the next three years. And we looked at things like the uplist, we looked at things like financing the company, increasing our talent basis, reaching out to additional customer base. And we thought of all of that as we looked to bring on a director from the C side onto the XRO side. We also looked at new directors that may want to introduce into the company in the coming months. So we're really happy to welcome John McLeod and Tony Fairweather to our XRO board of directors, and you can find their bios inside the circular. Another set of questions came in around the talent and skill set of the different organizations and how we would integrate into XRO. And so we do have a full integration team. We do have a 100 day plan where we're gonna work through the full integration. But what we would say is, as we thought, as we went through the due diligence and the initial deal process, what we learned was that there is a really complementary set of skill sets and we have strengths in engineering. We have complementary strengths on supply chain and in different functions of the business. We don't need to go out and hire anybody new. There's no lack of leadership and we'll continue to communicate to you as we put together the new organizational design. So another great set of questions came in around the business model itself and how we were calling ourselves asset light business. And you can see that on the websites, the microsites, the circulars, and really what that distinguishes us from most of the industry is how we're going to market. Leveraging the distribution base of our OEMs, utilizing contract manufacturers or assemblers to assemble the final truck product. We are gonna stay core to the propulsion system itself and the technology side of the business. This means that we don't have heavy capex. We're not looking to build out brick and mortar. We're not looking to build out new facilities. We'll stay focused on delivering through our partnerships. The next set of questions takes us back to the financials of the company and how the executives are compensated. What I would tell you is that Exro's compensation philosophy falls to our board of directors and our compensation committee. You can see the mandates of our compensation committee online. Exro enlisted Promeyer, who is one of the top compensation consultants in the US. We utilize that as we thought about the future and going up to NASDAQ and we'll continue to align to Promeyer's guidelines for companies of our market cap and in the same space as ours. And we are confident that our extra executive compensations are aligned fairly to the market. In regards to those shareholders who are questioning or asking about how we're gonna be continuing to market the company during the transaction period and before closing, and then again, post closing. So there is a slightly different way that we'll be marketing. Pre-close, we'll be really focused working with our proxy company, ensuring that current shareholders have all their information making sure that current shareholders have answers to your questions so you can make a really educated vote and understand why our board and our executive feel like this is the right move for the company. As we think about what comes post-close, we'll really be focusing on introducing the company to as many new shareholders as we can, really increasing our marketing efforts. As you can see today, our AMA is being filmed from Sea Electric's facility in Torrance, California, and we were attending the Roth conference here in California at the same time. So we've had an opportunity to share our story with multiple new potential shareholders, and we'll continue to do that as we work to get out there, market the company, and make sure everybody understands why this transaction is so transformational for the company. So from a technology perspective, 
A common question that came in was around, is there a problem with the coil driver? Is there not the market that we thought for the coil driver? I think this again goes to the reality of electrification. It is growing, the data is there. You can find some of it on our website and lots of it online. But what is really important is that the transformation is happening. It is transitioning to electric. And for a coil driver perspective, we have transitioned as well. We've moved from IP on paper in 2020 to pilots, to in-vehicle, to in-first production. We haven't seen a lack of demand on the coil driver. We have seen changing goalposts. We have seen a change in what they require out of validation. And that ties into why we look to see electric a company that is blue chip validated over 500,000 real world miles with one OEM, over 3 million miles driven over the past several years. And that ability to really accelerate and own the complete system now so that we can accelerate coil driver. So as we think to that question around the technology, I would say it's actually the opposite. The coil driver is working exactly as we wanted it to work over the last several years. And that is one of the main reasons why C Electric wanted to merge in with extra coil drive, because they saw that benefit and that next generation of charging. They saw the benefit of continuing to increase the total cost of ownership for their customers. And it really just became a complete technology synergy. So there's no concern for us. And actually we're really excited about the next stage of the technology and integrating with C-Drive and really setting the benchmark for how we electrify in the commercial trucking and passenger vehicle worlds. Thank you so much to all of the shareholders that have reached out through the AMA or to our teams directly. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your questions to Exro. And we appreciate that there's lots to think about as we move to this next stage of the company. We have lots of avenues for you to answer your questions as we work through the final weeks of our shareholder vote. We have online, we have publicly filed information. We continue to take in questions on our Investor Connect site. Thank you all so much for your support. April 4th is our shareholder meeting with our scheduled and tentative closing date of April the 5th. We look forward to evolving Exro and our next stage of growth together. Thank you, everybody.